Kuwaye kuna mata Moyo unafawa Tau ya kuna jesu Pone siwedu Nekutenda tau ya Ujisha gochedu Jesus, 
I'd like to greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and personal Savior. We ought to praise God for the gift of life. The psalmist says, let everything that has breath in it praise the Lord. We want to thank God for he's been good in our lives and he will always be good in our lives. But let me be quick to focus your attention. I was in my kitchen one day and um, so I, I was asked to make a cup of coffee. So as I was making a cup of coffee, usually I cannot cook. So what I did is I took a mug, filled it with water, and I put it in the microwave. Now what I didn't know is I didn't know that when you boil water, in fact, when you put water into the microwave and you leave it for over four minutes, you'd have superheated the water. So what I did, I put it in the microwave for four minutes. And when I took out the cup, there was something amazing that I realized. In fact, I learned a, a, a scientific fact. As I took it out, I intended to put sugar and the coffee. And to my amazement, the minute I put in sugar, praise God, I didn't scald myself, the water exploded. Now I wondered to myself, what could have caused this phenomenon until I visited Google and Google told me you can superheat water. Now, what is superheating? When you boil water above its boiling point, the water will boil. But here's the thing. It won't give you the bubbles. It will remain so still. It will remain so peaceful. It will remain so calm. Yet the minute you throw in your sugar, the minute you put in your coffee, the water will explode. Allow me to use the subject, the noise, in the silence. 
Let me focus your attention to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 39. The Bible says, And at the same time, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us cross over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him as he was in the ship. And there was with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves bit into the ship, so that it was now full. And as he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they came to him and awoke him and said to him, Master, don't you care that we drown? And he arose, and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm the noise in the silence let us pause for a word of prayer almighty father word in heaven your word has been read speak to us in jesus name we pray amen now this is a familiar story we know the passage but i want us to draw some lessons if you look at this story jesus has been preaching and he has been preaching for a while now. And he says, let us cross over to the other side. It was him who was suggesting. And the disciples obliged him. So the gate of the get on the boat, and as they are crossing over, I want you to notice and realize that it was calm. Everything was normal. There are times in this life when your life will seem to be calm. Everything is normal. And everything is going according to your plan. But things will never remain as they are. So we've learned. As they were going, there was a great storm. And a wind arose. And when the wind had done its work, it raised the waters. And the waters were buffeting the sheep. Beating about the sheep. And the Bible furnished us with all the information. The water was first filling the boat. And remember, at this particular time, the boats were not cruises as we have them today. So there are no flows to talk about. There's no underground floor. There's no mezzanine floor. There's no top deck to talk about. It's just but a simple boat. And Jesus is sleeping at the stern, resting on a pillow. Now, let me change the song. With Jesus in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. I have a problem with the song at this particular juncture because Jesus is in the vessel, and yet we have a storm. And for Peter, James, and John, and all the other disciples, it was not as happily as it was sung with Jesus in the vessel. You can smile at the storm. There was no smiling at this juncture, yet Jesus is in the vessel. There are times in this life when Jesus is in the vessel, but you cannot afford to smile at the storm because the storm is threatening your life. The boat is about to break, yet Jesus is in the vessel. Let me speak to a brother. Let me speak to a sister. There are times in your life <laughs> When you cannot afford to sing with Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. And remember, these are expert fishermen. They know how to chuck the waters. They know how to navigate. But at this particular juncture, this storm is no ordinary storm. There are storms in your life that you, 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 you circumvented and you navigated your way around. But there are certain storms that are going to come your way and you can never navigate through them but fortunately the disciples knew that ah uh, we are not alone in this boat there's someone but yet he's sleeping question and I have a problem how can Jesus afford to sleep when the water is splashing on his face the water is fast filling the boat how can he afford to sleep? In fact, if you study your sleep and your sleep patterns, they'll tell you the minute someone pours water on you, even if you are in the deep state of sleep, you will come out of it. Why? Because 
your, your brain is wired in such a way that the subconscious mind is always linked to the conscious mind. So as you are sleeping, the subconscious mind takes the precedence. And when it takes charge, it is still connected to the conscious mind. But the minute you're poured water onto, your subconscious mind will send a signal to the conscious mind that something is happening. Wake up and you begin to activate your senses so that you are aware of what's going on. But in this particular narrative, Jesus seems to carry on. Now, come with me to the text and let's analyze the text. The disciples come to him and they say, Master, don't you care that we perish? Let me put it in today's English. Master, what kind of sleep is this? That you're so careless and you don't even value life. You're continuing to sleep. When we are threatened by this water, we will drown. So I want to ask, what kind of sleep is this? Now as I was studying the Bible, I was amazed by the text that I came across. That's John 14 and verse 27. The Bible says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives you. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. Now notice, if you come with me to Philippians in chapter 4 in verse 7, the Bible says, and the peace of God surpasses all understanding and this shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now there's a difference between the peace from God and the peace of God. Ha. Now Christ is demonstrating true peace. Christ can afford to sleep when the boat is about to break. Why? Because he has the peace of God and he has the peace from God. But there's something in the text that you missed and perhaps we need to demystify it. <laughs> because the peace from God comes to you and me as a gift from God. That's why he says, I am going to give you peace. And this peace is not comparable to the peace that the world will give you. Pose. So it means there are two kinds of peace. The peace from God and the peace from the world. But Christ is saying my peace is not comparable to the peace from the world. So the question that we ought to ask is what is the peace from the world? Now the world will tell you. The world will tell you once you reach your, your accomplishments, you've got your accolades hung upon the wall, you've got a nice house, you've got a nice car, you've got a nice family, the world will tell you he's doing quite well and he is at peace. That's the peace from the world. But this is not the peace from God. And remember, the peace from God is different from peace of God. So many of us <laughs> seem to have peace from the world. And when the world recognizes you, and the world, when it acclaims your name, when the world clamors and claps and jeers for you, that's the peace from the world. But Christ is saying, my peace is different from the peace from the world. Because the peace that I give you, the peace of God, surpasses all understanding. And right now in the text, this kind of peace that Christ is demonstrating, surely it baffles my mind. How can you sleep when the boat is about to break? How can you wear a smile in this world when things are turning upside down? When you look at world economies, they are crashing. When you look at the pandemics, the, 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 the rate, they are so shocking. How can you afford to wear a smile and walk to Oh, it's because you know something. You have received peace from God. So Christ, because he has true peace, he can afford to sleep. Now the disciples come to him and they say, Oh, master, don't you care that we perish? And guess what? When Christ wakes, he does not begin by rebuking the disciples. No, we have to attend to the issue at hand. Praise God. 
So Christ awakes and he looks at the sea. He looks at the wind and he looks at the waves as they are beating upon the boat. And he says, verse 39, peace, be still, problem. Now, as I was trying to do a word study on this phrase, peace, be still. Remember, this is a translation from the original into English. And the writer, when he was penning the words, being directed by the Spirit of God, in the original, which was Greek, the words that are used there, if I were to use my own translation, I would not have chosen peace, be still. Because there's a problem with the word peace. If you just do a word study on the word peace, peace means a state of calmness, no disturbance, no agitation. That's peace, according to your Webster's. But now here Jesus says, peace, be still. Problem. How can you say peace, be still? As if there's some agitation in the word peace. So I was led to the original. And when I did a word study in the original, I was blown away. Sorry, I have to teach you a little bit of Greek. Now, the original word there, if I were to translate it, Christ said, silence, be silent. Now, if you look at that again, you have a problem. Because it seems as if there is noise and silence. So how can you hush silence? And if you go deeper, the phrase, be still. If you are to study it, you will find out that Christ was saying, Silence! I have muzzled you. Now let me demystify. When you have a dog or a horse, let's take a dog. Your dog is vicious. And you want to walk it in the pavement, in the road, in the street. But you know your dog is vicious. And you know that it might ruffle the people on the street. What you do, you find yourself a muzzle, and over its mouth and nose, you put the muzzle. Now, the muzzle is to prevent the dog from opening its mouth. Now, what Christ is saying here, silence, I have muzzled you. Christ is saying, I'm speaking to you because the subject is no longer the disciples. The subject it's now the storm. But remember, a storm has no eyes. A storm has no ears. A storm has, has, has no hands. But yet Christ is speaking to the storm as a subject. And he says, silence. I have silenced you. Silence. I have muzzled you. Now you realize that this statement is so pregnant. What Christ is saying is, just like the water in the microwave, it seems to be still, <laughs> but yet there's some noise in its stillness. It seems to be peaceful, yet there's some agitation in it. Now, physics told me that when you superheat water, the atoms and the molecules are so busy jostling about, but they cannot show it. They seem to be at peace, yet they're not at peace. But the minute you introduce a disturbance, all of a sudden the water will explode. So the wind, the calmness in the wind, Christ is saying, silent, I see you. And your nature, you're supposed to be silent, but there's some noise in you. And I have to address the noise. Therefore, he says, silence, I have silenced you. Now let's demystify it. There are people in life today, when the world looks at you, you are at peace. In fact, they actually yearn to be like you. <laughs> When they look at your accolades, when they look at your achievements, they all want to be like you. In fact, you are like a role model to them. Yet deep inside you, there's some noise that they can't hear. And you've looked to man, you've looked to your expertise, but you cannot silence the noise. So what is the noise? Thank you for asking. I know you're asking. Let me speak to the five of you who have asked. Did you know? That when you seem to be at the peak of it all, 
God will not give you everything. There are certain things that still trouble you at night. Though you're living in a condo, there are certain things that will still trouble you though you have a fat bank account. There are certain things that will still vex you, yet you seem to have it all. Why? There's some noise in your silence. And when you look at your life, your children have become the noise. Your job has become the noise. Your financial status has become the noise. Your marriage has become the noise. And guess what? When you look at this noise, no man can provide a solution. So though we see the peace on the outside, we can admit and witness that surely you seem to be at peace. But yet like a clown that has been put on a show, wearing a big smile, laughing and smiling and juggling all the balls and the sticks and people laughing and jeering, but yet the clown deep inside him, he is weeping and crying, but because by nature of his job, he has to wear a smile. Many of us today appear to have this peace. Many of us today appear to have this silence, but yet there's a noise that's in us and we've looked to you humans and they can't give us a solution we've looked to our expertise we don't have any solution why because the noise is so much louder but praise God we have he who can speak to a situation for he spoke to the storm and guess what the storm listened and the storm obeyed that's why the text ends by saying they asked one another and said who is this man that even the winds obey? I'm here to tell you of Jesus. <laughs> I'm here to tell you of Jesus. Jesus can speak into your situation. And guess what? When he speaks to your situation, they will obey and they will oblige and they will listen to him. And in the end, a great calm was witnessed now there's a difference i know you're asking <laughs> before jesus says peace be still this was a great storm and after he silenced and after he muzzled the noise in the silence there was a great calm you were supposed to ask what's the difference between the great calm that was witnessed after and the calmness that was there when they left starting off the journey because remember when jesus says let us cross over there was no storm so the question is what's the difference between the calmness after the storm and the calmness that was there before the storm. Because we ought to see the trajectory and we ought to see the difference when Christ speaks into your life. The Bible says in the book of John, when the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Ha! Now this great calmness that prevailed after the storm was true calmness. For God had muzzled the noise in the silence. Now let me speak to a brother. Let me speak to a sister. Let me just speak to the six of you who are going through storms. When God speaks to your storms, he will not just speak to them. He will muzzle them. And just like the dog on the street, as you are walking your dog, if it's muzzled, regardless of its size, regardless of its built, I will not be moved because I can see the muzzle on its mouth. God is willing to muzzle your storms. God is willing to muzzle the noises in your silence. Only when you wake him. Because he has the true peace. So he could afford to sleep because he had the peace of God. And he is the giver of the peace from God. So many of us 
are striving and jostling for peace from the world. But we ought to rather jostle and bustle for the peace from God. And when we have the peace from God, we should yearn and strive for peace of God. Because it is only the peace of God. And did you hear Philippians say, this peace that surpasses all understanding, it defies logic. Because this peace that surpasses understanding will allow you to sleep even when it's raging outside. This particular kind of peace will allow you to walk tall when you have no penny in your pocket. This kind of peace will allow you to sit with the kings and you will speak out, stand for the truth. Why? Because you have the peace of God. Only when you awake him. Because Jesus will carry on sleeping. And Jesus will let you be as you try and fight, as you try and rescue yourself. He will let you be only when you come to him and only when you give him your consent. When you say, Master, don't you care we perish? That's when he steps in. And praise God. God is no respecter of persons. If it were me, when I was awoken, I would first say, oh, Peter, how can you awake me for this? Where is your faith? But he doesn't. He first addresses the storm. Praise God. When God steps in, he doesn't blame you. And you know what? God does not ashamed you, but he addresses the storm. And after he has addressed the storm, then he addresses you. Where is your faith? Up to now. I expected you to have this peace of God. Up to now, I expected you to have peace from God. Not peace from the world. Could this be your plea and prayer? That, oh God, I want to have the peace from God. And I want to have peace of God. Because there's a difference. When you have this peace, you can safely smile at the storm. Without this peace, you always be in panic mode. Could this be your plea? Could this be your prayer? If it is, pray with me. Almighty Father, what in heaven, we want to thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word is always in season and your word has the power to transform. Transform our minds, transform our lives into your likeness. Many of us are seeking peace from the world. But, oh Lord, give us peace from God. And when we have peace from God, give us the peace of God. Because it is this peace that will allow us to sleep in a storm. It will allow us to smile at the storm. It will allow us to charge right into the storm. For we know your mercy. Your love, your goodness will follow us the rest of our days. And when these follow us, we can face any challenge. We can face any storm. We can face any circumstance. We can face any situation. Because we know you are our peace. This we pray, not in the name of any man, but only in that name which was given to men under heaven by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. Let every believing tongue shout amen. Amen. God bless you all. Oh, my dear
Jesus, atunga 